Today we're going to look at scopes, how to use them to add consistency throughout your project. Most programs have some type of a scope. If it's a waveform, an RGB parade, vector scope, or a histogram, nine times out of 10, a program will have one of these and you can use these tools to help with grading your projects. Let's jump in and see how they work. So in DaVinci, over here on the right hand at the bottom, we have this button to see different scopes. If we're working with just one monitor, we're gonna have to switch between each of them. If you have a little more screen real estate, you can click right here and it'll pop them out. Now that we have them open, what do they do and what am I looking at? So for a waveform monitor in an RGB parade, the data is represented from the left side of the shot to the right side of the shot. So as we can see here, we have a highlight, which is probably the sun was blown out. We can see it clipped right there. It's flat. There's no extra data. It's just white. There's no gradients, nothing. And then we can see uh, over here where it starts to get a bit darker. We see the sky. That's pretty much the sky because we can see that it's blue it is over in this area. Now, an RGB parade is this guy over here. It's the same exact thing. It's just the red, green, and blue channels are split up. It helps to see a couple things here and there. Like if there was something that was poking out in this clutter, you'd be able to see it better represented over in this area. But with it being together, you can see different things. Like along the top of here, we can see that there's a red uh, shift. The, the red value is a little brighter than all of the other values. And then obviously the blue for the sky is up in this area. And then this is showing that there's a gradient here, but it's all pretty much white. All the uh, uh, red, green, and blue channels are all the same values. It's just that it's getting darker as it's dropping down throughout the sky right there. Coming down to the vector scope, the vector scope just shows saturation. It shows the colors and the saturation of those colors. Think of this as just a color wheel. It's set up the exact same way. You have your red, magenta, blue, cyan, green, and yellow. The exact same way that a color wheel set up is how you would see this information. Now, if we look down here in the vector scope, we can see that there's very little saturation. If we were to increase that saturation, there isn't much of a change going on down here, but obviously this shot, you can see a huge change. I mean, there's a little bit down there, but it's not really showing that much information. So what we can do is we can come into here and we'll click the 2X zoom and we'll add a skin tone indicator. And I'll explain that one later. The other thing that we can do is we can bring up this and we can see that, that uh, signal a little stronger. We don't wanna bring it all the way up because then we can't see little pieces. And if it's just a little bit, but we want to be able to see some of that. So we'll just bring it, I would say, right about there. Now, if I add saturation, we can see that a bit better. So now going over to the histogram, it's representing the luminance values, but everything is crushed down. So if we were to just take this RGB parade, smush it, and then flip it sideways, we would have the same exact thing represented. But the thing that doesn't show here is you can't see where in the shot that is represented. It's just showing that somewhere in the shot, there's a really bright value clipping somewhere. And we, but we can't really see where that is. That's the cool thing about a waveform and an RGB parade is that we can see, okay, it's right around this area, which is right around here. If I was to, you know, make a power window and take this area over here, and completely blow it out we can just see they look you know pretty much the same like I could just back this up just a bit and we could see that there's a bunch of value over here but we can't see where that is in the shot and here we can obviously really see that so now let's go back to one of the indicators here so it's the skin tone indicator and as we can see in this shot we have a Caucasian lady that has a very pale skin. But one really cool thing that we can do is if we just use a um, power window and then just 
so we can see just what we selected, we can see that her skin falls on this skin indicator, okay? Now, going over to a darker skin lady, if we would do that same exact thing and have it just on her skin, a lot of people wouldn't think that this would be the same, but the skin tone values are the same when it comes to color. It's just luminance values that's the difference between them. So that's how we can see um, skin tones. Now remember, this will be different if there's a, some type of color cast, if there's a light being shined on someone and it's let's say a red light or a green light or a blue light or whatever kind of light, or if we have a sunrise or sunset, unless the shot is perfectly balanced, it's not going to show that, you know, that the skin tone falls on that unless we were to do things like a uh, HSL qualifier or something of that nature, but um, that's outside the scope of this video. One of the other things that we can do is we can set these reference levels, and what this will do is we can have consistency throughout our project. So if we wanted to not have everything crushed, so like let's say, let's take this uh, shot here. If we were to just, hold on, let me get rid of this. If we were to just, you know, bring this value down and say, okay, right there is where I want all the shadows to fall in this project, we could, you know, bring this up and bring that lower level up and say, okay, the majority of our, of our uh, shadows fall right in there. We could do the same with our highlights as well. And then, you know, when we would jump over to another shot, we could simply say, okay, you know, we have to just be cautious that our values don't go below this because if they do, you know, our black values are going to be different um, throughout all the shot, all those shots in our project. And the same way with the highlights too, is if we can manipulate these all we want, but we would just want to stay within that and then we can have consistency throughout our whole project. So that's pretty much how we use scopes. Now, like I said before, this is just a tool. We don't want to live and die by our scopes, but it is a great tool to be able to balance all of your shots throughout a project. And with that being said, my name's JR and See you when I see you. Wow. Mm.